Happy 2023. It's Sunday today. Christmas and the New Year are done. Um, Sundays sometimes when the weather is bad, which is it is today, are a perfect day to just potter around. I often potter around in my own bedroom. Or sometimes I light a fire and sit downstairs. So I've gotten ready for the day and I wanted to talk about what I've been doing with these toppers. Now you can see I'm wearing 8RH14 John Renault Top Smart. I did a review on this over a year ago and it's been such a useful piece. You know, she's got a very, very lovely layers but she had become quite stiff um, the fibers were separating a lot okay so um, I thought I would wash her and put some conditioner in her once the fibers start to become dry there isn't really a magic product that you can buy to put them back to how they were when you first got her, that lovely, supple, soft, silky um, feel that they had. But, but washing them, I washed three pieces actually. I washed this straight John Renault topper, I washed the wavy John Renault, and I, watch, I washed Mia. For heaven's sake, can you believe that Mia is still going? It's got to be three years old. So <laughs> I want to show you what the unwashed straight John Renault in exactly this color is like texture, texture wise. So this is the unwashed one. Now have a look at this. It's not the silkiest feel, okay, but it's better than what it was. Now, do you see how it's clumping? Do you see that? And even if you put a comb through it, it kind of looks okay for a couple of minutes and then clumps straight away again. It just looks so dry and stiff and I really, I really don't want that, but you can see but actually the clumping, it's not as bad as this one. So this is the unwashed one. I can also smell that it's unwashed. I might actually take it downstairs and give it a wash, which I find really relaxing to do. But um, despite conditioning it, I have no doubt that by the end of the day, this is going to be clumping again. And I have yet to find a good um, product to put in her that's going to, 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 to sort of make her that soft feel. Um, the John Renault conditioning spray is something that I use once I take them off. It doesn't really make that much of a difference. When your piece is getting old and drying out, <clears throat> I don't think there's anything really that you can get. Well, nothing that, I, that I've that i tried that's worked and I've looked um, on Amazon and there are descriptions on Amazon, you know, you, you, you sometimes find recommendations on uh, videos and things. But generally speaking, you know, they, they, they just say, oh, add shine to your synthetic and natural wigs. And um, I don't think I've got a problem with dullness. It's just the the dryness that, that that's that's annoying. So here is Mila. Now she has dried overnight. Let's comb her out. So have a look to see what she's like. I must say when you go downstairs and have a look at them after washing, you look at them and you think, blimey, they look really wrecked. 
So I'm brushing very gently. I put her on my lap and sort of brush in little strokes. And let's see what the end result's going to be. I do know that from washing Mila before that the, the overall result was really good, but it's not going to last. I know it's not going to last, so I'm not going to be too disappointed. I think it's just a matter of washing and conditioning on a regular basis, basically. Uh, when I get a new piece, I, I wait as long as I can before washing her. Because, you know, once they get past a certain point, they're never the same again. Right, so... There's not much separation. Seems to be quite nicely cohesive. And um, there's a softening effect, I suppose, on the um, on the waves. There's a softening effect. I remember this piece when I first when I first got her. My goodness, I had a video. I'll see if I can put it in. I I received her, and it was a secret at that time. Steve didn't know anything about it. And I brought her into the bedroom and I had my phone. I put her on and I was like running my fingers through her. And I could see myself, you know, with this lovely hair. I hadn't seen that for so long. It, it was years since I'd seen something like that. And I would look at videos, not believing my eyes as to how realistic these pieces looked. And I remember looking at the lace front and thinking, how do they, how do they do it? How do they make it look so natural? <laughs> you know, and the part? I'll never forget inspecting the part. For those who don't know, although it is quite widely known, this silicone scar tape is really nice to put just under the part. So you just get a bit like this out. It's kind of skin colour matches my skin colour okay. If you've got lighter or darker skin you just put your foundation or your concealer really nicely along that part and it'll match your skin uh, and also the same for the for the lace front too. But that lightness, that pop of lightness at, at, the, at the parting makes all the difference makes all the difference and I would look at the reviews and I would look at pictures and I'd think I would give anything to have hair like that again. I would give anything to be able to just have one piece that I could wear um, that's going to change my life. And I had no idea just how much it would change my life and it really, really has. Let me show you the wavy Top Smart. I've just brushed her out and I've put her back in the box with the tissue paper and the um, netting. But look. She looks quite soft, doesn't she? I brushed out the waves. I think she looks not bad at all actually. It's really nice when you take the time to look after your pieces. It's really nice. It's kind of like a little meditation, you know, on a wet and windy day like it is today. You just want to kind of potter around and it's the perfect thing to do. And it's lovely actually when you come to wear them again. You, you open up the box, you almost forget that you've <laughs> reconditioned them somewhat. And it's always such a lovely <laughs> surprise. So there were a couple of ladies who were commenting on the UniWigs review. The, oh, the last couple of reviews I posted, it's uh, the Ida Topper, real hair topper. You don't have any of these issues really uh, of drying out to the same extent, but I'll be very interested to see how long it lasts. Anyway, a couple of ladies were commenting on on the fact that the John Renault toppers have got 
this patch of silicone over which a comb, a click comb has been sewn and it sits really around there on your head. Now unfortunately um, they must have similar hair loss to me because when, when I usually click that comb closed it pulls on my bio hair there um, and not only that but there are some pieces where you can see the white silicone patch yeah and um, just by the lace there that clip was kind of poking through and it looked like something was poking through the lace you know so I just got a small pair of scissors and I snipped off the clip-on comb and then I peeled off the silicon and it came off the lace really well and I've used some tape this sort of tape to tape down the front rather than you know using that clip it is so much more comfortable ladies thanks so much for for, for sharing the fact that you'd done that. You gave me the idea that it was possible to do and I've tried it today and it works beautifully. So I look forward to wearing this one again. This is probably my most glam and most princess hair topper that I have. I believe it's 16 inches like this, but because it's the same length all the way around, whereas this one is more layered, it's got kind of a side swoop. Um, it looks much longer than 16 inches and so I kind of just tuck the end into it I've got the tissue paper in there and I pop the knitting over the whole thing and I just put it in the box like this and it just sits there waiting to be rediscovered the next time So how's everybody doing this January? Did everybody have a nice Christmas and New Year? I had a lovely family Christmas which I'm so grateful for. January and February in the UK can be a little bit difficult to get through because there's so little light out there. It can get quite overcast and gloomy and although I don't particularly mind rain, it's drizzle. The drizzle chips away at you. <laughs> Um, and the wind it's probably they're the most challenging two months of the year to get dressed up and go out and actually look half decent because you always look like you've been dragged through a hedge backwards I think when the weather is is the way it is out there so these months end up being quite reflective months for me anyway I don't know what it's like for you I often wonder what it's like to live in a place where it's it you know most of the year it's sunny and quite level I wonder what that would be like to live amongst all of that sunshine all through the year I, I really love the seasons yes winter can be drab and dull and challenging but my goodness, I love the excitement of the snow and then I love the build up to spring, you know, and then summer in the UK is glorious. It's like a heaven, you know, everything's in bloom. It's so lush and green. You do get quite good sun. The, the days are very long. The nights are quite warm. Generally speaking, it's not too bad at all. And then you have the autumn, another favourite time of the year. I just love every season. And the beginning of every year, that's my time to, to, to reflect on how the previous year has gone. I think after the events in 2020 that were so shocking and out of the blue and had such far-reaching consequences, I went through 2021 20, and 22 waiting for something to spring out at me like it was going to spring out from behind a bush or behind a tree. Surprise! You know, the least 
the last thing you expected I was thinking what's the last thing I would expect you know what alien landing <laughs> what <laughs> um, but but nothing really happened it kind of ticked along quite well but I don't I don't have that feeling of back to normal I do not have the feeling of back to normal I feel like back to normal we've missed the boat on that and I I don't feel like we're going to ever get back to to how it was before and so that makes me feel a little bit unsettled I'm not very good with change I don't like change I like comfort who's messaging me she's just sent me this picture of the baby in her first trainers isn't that the, the cutest thing you've ever seen absolutely wonderful <coughs> And unfortunately, if there's one thing in life that's guaranteed, is change. That's the only thing that's guaranteed in life. I can't really say that I'm very settled in myself. I really want to share that with you. I want to be honest with you. I'm not the type to get depressed. I don't suffer from anxiety. Sorry guys, my camera ran out of battery, so I've had to come downstairs and plug you in. I came downstairs and it's too cold down here. So I'm trying to build a fire. Hopefully it will be successful, but you can never be too sure. It's very important for me to be honest. You know, when I started this channel, it was really, um, fueled by the excitement of wearing hair. But the thing is, this channel is called Life and Hair. It's not just wig reviews, because... That's better. Because really, wearing hair is such an intimate thing to do. It is part of every aspect of your life when you meet new people or managing the friends you have coming out to your to your uh, spouse or boyfriend or even dating all of yeah, I mean hair hair is is central to every aspect of a woman's life and I really wanted to reflect that in this channel I get a lot of comments from women who who are really wanting to be at ease with wearing the hair that they have. Some of them have a big collection, some of them have just got one, but they all share the same thing in common, is that they don't go out wearing it. They don't take any risks wearing it. They're too frightened to attend a social event wearing it. Every now and again, I get a comment from um, a woman who has worn her piece for the very first time and, and you know worn it in front of family or close friends and it's always a bit uncomfortable there's no getting away from that you know if, if you're one of those ladies watching this video I want to give you reassurance that I can certainly relate to what you're saying and I do remember the very first time I came downstairs with Mila on my head to show my husband. I was so nervous. And I didn't even know that he wasn't going to say, oh, <laughs> you look a bit silly, take it off, I prefer you without it on. Because I didn't want, I didn't want to not have extra hair, helper hair in my life. I wanted so much to be able to rely on my first piece, which was Mila. Initially, it was to wear to social occasions, you know, because in those days, I was going to a women's circle, uh, we were doing meditation and stuff like that. 
uh, we used to uh, meet up in the evening and we were also going to another group in our local town called Dinner and Discussion where we would a group of people would go to the pub and we'd sit five to a table and we would have certain topics to discuss amongst ourselves. It was a really nice way of meeting new people and I really wanted to put my best foot forward. Do you feel the same? Are you in that position? This question isn't necessarily aimed at those <laughs> those really experienced hair wearers out there who, who, who have got so much to teach me. They've got more hair than I've got, wigs wise, and they have been wearing them for much longer than I have. But my heart melts, it melts when when I get a comment from a little fledgling bird, <laughs> you know, who wants to fly the nest and be able to beautify themselves, to present themselves to people. And I'll never forget how that felt. I used to put Mila on, do my makeup and stuff. Of course, it was an amazing transformation straight away. It, it, there is there is nothing like putting on a topper or a wig to instantly elevate your look and make you look younger, fresher, healthier. You know, and, and, and I'd get in the car and I'd be checking my lace front a hundred times before I got to the venue. And then in the in the venue, I would just have my head down like this. I was so worried and concerned that someone was going to come up to me and say, are, are you wearing a wig? Why are you wearing a wig? Nobody ever did. Nobody in all the months and years that I've been wearing hair has ever come up to me and said, are you wearing a wig? And I think, on balance, overall, when people are looking at your face and talking to you, they're looking at your eyes and at your mouth, you know, just communicating with you and they have no cause to look into your hairline. So from a distance, anyway, a lace front looks perfectly natural and a mono top or a mono side. You don't have to be concerned about that. It's only if you have got strong direct light on that lace front that it can be visible for someone who is really looking into your hairline, you know. And after a while, you realize that wearing hair gives you so much that actually you're prepared to relax about the other aspects of it. If somebody knows that you're wearing a topper or a wig, well, if somebody knows, that's something you can live with. It's not a dirty, guilty little secret. And remember, there are other cultures out there where wearing hair is totally normal. It's part of the culture. Everybody does it. It's not this big deal that it is for some other parts of the culture. And let me know if you find this time of the year a time for reflection, introspection, where you assess how the previous year has gone and try and get an idea through visualization, journaling, manifestation techniques, even, even for those people who do vision boards, which I'm, I'm very intrigued about. I'd love to try it. If, if only I could just suspend disbelief for long enough to try it, to really commit myself to it. I'll see, maybe, maybe I, I can do something like that on one of these wet days. So this has been, yeah, just a casual little catch up on a Sunday. Um, I'm going to have my lunch now, but I will see you very soon because I want to review my latest purchase from Paula Young. I got her in the sale. It was a toss up between Spotlight 
and another one, which I don't even remember the name of. And then it turned out that I was scrolling something else altogether caught my eye and I bought her. Her name is Collins. And I bought her in the colour Honey. And I will definitely do that review in the next few days. Have a good start to 2023 and um, I hope all of your dreams and hopes and aspirations really come to fruition this year.